many people here at this meeting who want to connect to the awesome God? Good. All eyes closed. As I pray this first prayer, and as we pray this first prayer, if you are in this meeting this afternoon, and right now, you are so worried. Worried because your children are not getting married. Find a way to this altar and be on your knees as you pray this prayer. Make sure that nobody's voice overshadows your voice. The awesome God must do something. And that's why we're in this meeting. Can you shout this louder than anyone around you? We're not here to play. We're here for serious business. Serious business. Say, oh God! Answer your name in my life. Can I hear you saying that? Say it again. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray it. God arise and answer your name in my life. That's why Jesus brought you here. Continue praying, continue praying. Tell God to answer his name in your life. Jesus name we pray Father I'm praying for this your children at the altar and also the children that they represent within the next few weeks your miracle shall manifest any power that does not want your children to get married I command them to be disgraced the Lord shall open the windows of heaven upon the lives of your children in the name of Jesus and by the next time we have a seminar like this you come here with your testimonies in the name of Jesus thank you Heavenly Father in Jesus name we pray you may go back to your seat rejoicing now thank you Jesus 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 Thank you, Jesus. There is power, power, wonderful walking power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonderful walking power in the precious blood of the Lamb. That is power. There is power, power, power. power. Wonder walking power in the blood, in the blood of the land, of the land. There is power, 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 power. Wonder walking power in the precious blood of the land. Everybody will pray like this again. Please don't negotiate with the enemy. We are not here to negotiate. Say every problem, every problem. assigned to disgrace me. To disgrace me. Die. Die. It is the problem we want to kill you. I'm not killing anybody here. It's the problem. Any problem, any problem. assigned to disgrace me. Die. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and kill the problems. I refuse to be disgraced. That is the power of God. That's the power of God. Ma pata se pelika tanda ka. Ribo sopende ke yabo shentera ba santa yaba. 
Ya is enough is enough. Any problem assigned to disgrace it. Let the problems with disgrace in the name of Jesus. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, as I, as I'm clapping my hands now, my enemies shall flee. Open your mouth and begin to decree that one. As I'm clapping my hands now, my enemies shall flee. They 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 shall flee. Masipoka tendeke abo shendera basanta. In Jesus name we pray. Stretch your right hand towards me here. Your right hand. Stretch it. Father. This hands that your children are stretching to me here. Let your power fall upon this hands in the name of Jesus. Wherever these hands are laid, let every infirmity disappear. In the name of Jesus. Any power that does not want to give you peace, when you lay these hands, those powers shall disappear and vanish in the name of Jesus. Receive the touch of God. Receive the touch. 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 In the name of Jesus. Keep your eyes closed. Any part of your body where there is trouble or pain, it is time for you to smite the place. You are going to smite the place seven times. When you smite the place, the Bible says, smite the enemy and they shall flee. The Bible says, the strangers shall be afraid and they shall run out of their closed places. Get yourself ready. Don't don't worry about the pain if you need to smile the place. Are you ready now? Yes. One. You are not doing it well. It's too soft. One. Aha, that's good. Two. Three. Look at what is happening over there. Four. Five. Six. Seven. That's right. Something is happening here. Somebody is receiving a new organ. Try it again. Try it again. One. Two. Six, seven. That's the power of God. It's going from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. From the top of your head to the sole of your feet. From the top of your head to the sole of your feet. From the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Now do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Aha. That's the healing power of God. Makatenda ya boshendera ba. Ribo sepia le katenda kaya boshendera ba santa. Bakatanda rabo santa ya ba. You will now shout this loud and clear. Oh God of signs and wonders. Appear in my situations. In the name of Jesus. Call upon him to appear. Appear in my situations. Makapari kaseta abashanda. In Jesus name we pray. If you are the person here and your name is Comfort, please find a way to the altar. Your name is Comfort. Find a way to the altar. The enemy is planning something against you, but the Lord will scatter it completely. Basantia. You are going to speak to the Lord yourself now. Focus on any particular situation you want divine intervention. Any situation. 
whether it's your children, whether it's your marriage, whether it's your business, just focus on that situation now. You will now shout this louder than anyone around you. Say, powers, powers. behind this problem. Behind this problem. That, is, that situation you focus upon. Can you say it again? In the name of Jesus. Aha! Thank you, Jesus. Aha! 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 aha. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bakapotari kasantaya bashanda. Amen. Raise up your two hands to the Lord as we sing this song, glad and clear. You are the awesome God, the mighty God. I will praise your name. You are the awesome God, the mighty God. I will praise your name. I will praise your name, Jehovah. Jehovah, I will praise your name. I will praise your name, Jehovah. You are the awesome God. You are the awesome. Sing it loud. Sing it loud. I will praise your name. Oh, you are the God, the mighty God. I will praise your name. I will praise God. Jehovah, Jehovah, I will praise your name. I will praise your name. Oh, Jehovah, sing it again loud and clear. The mighty God, the mighty God. I will praise your name. The living God, I will praise your name. I will praise your name, Jehovah. Jehovah, Jehovah. I will praise your name, Jehovah. Sing it again, Lord, and say your name. Jehovah, the mighty God, I will praise your name. I will praise your name, Jehovah. Jehovah, Jehovah. my family. Can I hear you say that? Open your mouth and begin to pray for your family now. In your awesome power. Visit my family. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Visit my family. Visit my family. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, all somebody by the end. One on one. You are going to pray for your friend. Your friend will pray for you. 
Aha. Say, my friend. Say it loud. Every battle you are facing is dead now. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray for your friend. God of miracle, I know. Yes, I know. I'm serving my God of miracle, I know. Yes, I know. I'm serving the God of miracle, I know. Right there where you are this morning. Take any song of praises in your own mouth. Any song of praises that the Holy Spirit lays in your heart and sing it loud and clear to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. Any song of praises. Sing it loud and clear to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for what you have been doing at the FBC. We thank you for your children here. Thank you because we can rely on your power every day. Thank you because you are our nail in the sure place. Many waters have passed under the bridge, but you have kept your children standing. Thank you because in the midst of the confusion, the midst of the dangers, you have kept your children undevoured by the lion. We give you all the glory in the name of Jesus. But I thank you for these annual seminars. And what you have used the seminar to do in our lives. Thank you for what you are going to do today too. Accept our thanks in Jesus name. Lord. Your word says. You are higher than the highest. Your word says. With man. This is impossible. But with God. All things are possible. Your word says. Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established. Father, we rely on those words here this day. Touch each one at the point of their needs. Let the awesome power of God envelope your children. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.
a louder amen. amen. I'd like you to walk up to seven persons and tell them the God of Elijah shall trouble your troublers in the name of Jesus. Can you say to seven persons? Shout hallelujah. Let's have a say God bless you. I thank God and it's so wonderful being in your midst again. And I say happy new year to you all. Because it's never too late to say so. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Let me say that I appreciate your constant invitation to come to this seminar. I do not take it for granted. I actually take it as a privilege. So I most sincerely thank you <laughs> for inviting us for these uh, uh, seminars. God will continuously bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. But today, we are looking at a very deep subject. And I may be very, very slow. Because I want you to understand every word that I'm going to say from here. Life is not easy. Or is life easy? (laughs) Life is not easy. Job said, man that is born of a woman is of few days and is full of trouble. So the second name for the world is actually trouble. That's why I'm praying for somebody here. That your troublers shall be troubled. In the name of Jesus. By the time we finish this meeting, there are people here. You have an array of enemies gathered around you. One by one, the Lord shall disgrace them. There are people here too. They have so many things bothering their minds. And they find it difficult to smile. But at the end of today's meeting, your period of unending laughter shall start. The Lord gave me a word. I was, I was on my way here. And the Lord sent me back to go and pick certain things which I'm going to give to Pastor Yilu. I don't know the person. The Lord said there is someone here that presently Either your son or your daughter wants to marry an evil person which you do not support. And that I should give that person the prayers that I'm going to give to pastor. So after the service, if you are that person, come to him and collect that prayer to release your child from the hand of the strange man or the strange woman after this meeting. I don't know who the person is. But I was going out of my office and said, go back. And I picked it. So if you are here, and already some strange man or strange woman wants to capture your child, that child shall be released. The awesome God. Connecting to the awesome God. Now, if you open your Bible to Psalm 145, verse 3, I'm sure there will be somebody in FBC who has the voice of an evangelist who can read it loud from wherever she is. Not a man, no, I want a sister. <laughs> Psalm 145, verse 3. Great is the Lord. Greatly to, and greatly to be praised. And his greatness. And his greatness is what? Unsearchable. Have you all found it? Yes. Can we read it? Let me hear you raise your voice a bit more than that. That's fine. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Then that is greatness. Is what? 
unsearchable. Unsearchable. That is, by the time the brain of man has come to a full stop, it is then his own begins to work. When we say awesome, awesome can mean over 21 things. That's why I say we're going to be slow so you understand when we say the awesome God. Awesome means amazing. Awesome means breathtaking. Something that takes your breath away. What have I said just now? Awesome means fearful. It's a fearful God. Awesome means fearsome. The God that sends terror to the enemy. Fearsome. Awesome can mean formidable. That's why we say if the formidable God is behind you, nobody can defeat you. Formidable. Awesome means imposing. It's imposing. Awesome means impressive. Very impressive. Awesome means magnificent. I'm chasing the word around very well so that anywhere that word wants to run to this afternoon will catch it. So that <laughs> so when we say awesome God <laughs> when we say awesome God you know what we're talking about. It's a serious matter. Awesome means majestic. Awesome means mind blowing. Blows your mind away. Awesome means overwhelming. When something overwhelms a person, awesome. Awesome means stunning. Stunning. Awesome means wonderful. Wonderful. That is full of wonders. Something happens, people open their mouth and they cannot close it. Wonderful. And I see somebody in this seminar today, the wonderful God shall arise for your sake. Let your amen roar like thunder. Awesome means fascinating. Fascinating. Very fascinating. Awesome means incredible. See, this is incredible. Awesome means incredible. Awesome means marvelous. Awesome means what? Marvelous. Awesome means unbelievable. Unbelievable. Awesome means astonishing. Astonishing. Awesome means extraordinary. It's extraordinary. Awesome means powerful. Powerful. So, if the meaning of awesome is this, when we talk about an awesome God, you know we're talking about something really, really serious. God is awesome. God does awesome things. His works are awesome. His name is awesome. His presence is awesome. His power is awesome. Unfortunately, the modern day man has been programmed to believe more on what the doctor is saying, what the experts are saying, 
what the lawyer is saying, what the consultant is saying, than what God is saying. And many times, everyone look at us in dismay and they wonder whether these people believe God at all. That's why they call Christians God's frozen people. What did I say? Frozen. It's like fish they put in the fridge. It's frozen. A man who is supposed to be giving the order is being ordered around. The one who is supposed to be the landlord is converted to tenant. The one who is supposed to be talking is silenced. Our modern day generation has sort of diverted us from the crude faith that we're supposed to have in God. It's a lamentable tragedy that many things that will have been solved when we take it to God, we take it to man, and the man will take it to destroy it. That's why the songwriter says, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our needs. So what a privilege to carry. Everything. How many things? Everything. Including that gilly on your head. Including that butter on your feet. <laughs> including the, your handbag. Including your toothpaste. Including the church. Including the husband. E- How many things? Everything. Everything. To God in prayer. In now lament say, what benefit we forfeit? What needless pain we bear? All because we do not carry. How many things? Everything. Everything. You see somebody following your child home and you don't like the way the person is looking. Then you allow the person to come uh, one month, two months, three months. You didn't talk to the Lord about it until the person has established a route. He then say, go, go, go. After the person has established a route. We did not carry the thing to the Almighty. The modern day man is in serious trouble indeed until we go back to primitive Christianity. What kind of Christianity? Primitive Christianity. I was reading a story <laughs> about the great apostle Joseph Babalola, who you can call the father of Nigerian Pentecostalism. He was uh, he was driving his car, and, a, and a, police, a policeman stopped him. He didn't do anything; didn't commit any offense. The policeman just wanted money. I said, "Baba, where are you going? Bring money." He said, "Ah, I want. I'm going to a crusade. Please don't disturb me." So, what do you mean? Pack. And he began to disturb this man of God. The man of God looked up to heaven and spoke in Yoruba because he speaks Yoruba. He said, enyida. And this host of heaven, where are you? Immediately he said that some unseen forces came and began to beat the policeman. Which whip, wah, wah. Everybody was hearing the sound of the whip. The man was rolling on the floor and crying. But nobody saw was beating him. The policeman was rolling with his uniform on the floor. And the Baba was there watching him. Then all of a sudden, the inspector, inspector of police came. Who was supposed to be in charge of that era. He knew the man of God. But this young policeman didn't know him. So when the a senior officer came and said, ah, Baba, ah, sorry, it's because he doesn't know you. Sorry, Baba, forgive him. Ah, 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 ah. Hey, this boy is in trouble today. Uh, Baba now looked up again and spoke again in Yoruba. And you go on, Efisile. At this house of heaven, release him. And they, they released the policeman. When the man stood up, he ran. That's what we call the power of the awesome God. Are you following what I'm saying? <laughs> so, uh, the Bible says, the spiritual man is mad. The prophet is foolish. The spiritual man is what? Mad. That is, when a spiritual man begins to do certain things, you will say he's crazy. Recently, 
This is one of our churches in the eastern part of Nigeria. A church of mountain of fire. I was this lady in church. She had a huge hunchback. 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41. No husband. For obvious reasons. The men do not want to marry a woman who was bent like this and had a huge hunchback. But she, she kept praying. She kept praying. Then, recently, she got married. That is not the testimony. <laughs> recently, she got married. She got pregnant. They were so poor in that part that she did not even, she didn't have money to even go for scan. They were going to this uh, prayer woman who deliver children, who deliver babies. That's why they were going for antenata. The day of delivery came. She, when she fell into labor, the woman, very experienced woman, so yeah, begin to push, push in Jesus and push. She pushed. The first baby came out. Was a boy. The woman said, Ah. There's this, uh, he's still, yeah, I think there's this, there's, one is still remaining there. Push, push me again. The second one came out. A girl. Then the woman said, ah, there's still one again. <laughs> there's still one again. Push again. She pushed. This time, a huge mass came out. Immediately, the huge mass came out. The orange vanished. She became straight like Miss Nigeria. You can see the wickedness of man. They tied the hunch on her back to marriage and bearing children. Believing that she would never break through to that level. But the minute she was able to break that barrier, the hunch too disappeared. I'm praying for somebody here. Any stubborn problem, the enemy is breaking your way, shall die today. In the name of Jesus, let your amen roar like thunder. We're talking about what? The awesome God. When it says, Thou shalt decree a thing, <laughs> He has given us power. Of all organizations on earth, is only one organization. The Bible says, you shall trample upon serpents and scorpions and over every power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. It's only the church. But if we have the power and we refuse to use it, it's not the fault of heaven. It's our fault. Are you following what I'm saying? We're talking about the power of the awesome God. God is awesome. God does awesome things. His name is awesome. His presence is awesome. His power is awesome. Many years back, my teen, ah, it's a long time. <laughs> a woman from my church was dying at the hospital. There is a particular word in the general hospital in those days that once they have concluded that the person will die. That's why they put them. That's why they put them. So she, she was put there. I drove there around 11 o'clock in the morning. And I saw her on the bed. She's been on that bed for 13 weeks. On one side. Couldn't stand up. Couldn't talk. So when I saw her, I wanted to rush inside. What's that? You can't get here. The man at the door said, Hello, hello, where are you going? Where are you going? The visiting time is 4 o'clock. Why are you here at 11 o'clock? Go, 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 go. Chase me out. But as I was looking at that woman on the bed, I know she will not last at that 4 o'clock. So I stood at the door and I said, Father, do something. Remove this man from that door. Then all of a sudden I had, Richard, Richard, hey, I'm going to the toilet. Please sir, watch this place for me. I said, <laughs> And he went out. 
That was my opportunity. I got in. Went straight to a bed. Sat on a bed. Started praying. It was not a quiet prayer. Because when you are addressing the spirit of death, the prayers cannot be quiet. Remember Jesus at the tomb of Lazarus? He prayed quietly to his father. Father, I thank you because you always hear me. Blah, 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 blah. But by the time he turned to the grave, the Bible said he cried loud, Lazarus! Comfort. If, thank God, he said Lazarus, comfort. If he said, comfort! There will have been crusade in that grave because everybody will come out. Because that was the resurrection and life talking. So you don't pray quiet prayers when you get to that kind of situation. So I started praying. Loud prayer in that hospital. All of a sudden, the woman who had not spoken for 30 weeks, I was hearing, Amen. Amen. Then as I continue praying, Amen. Amen. The voice was getting louder. Amen. Then after a while, she stood up, sat beside me, and was saying the Amen. I didn't know that all the other patients were watching us. So when they saw what was happening, then all over the world, I was hearing, Amen. 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 And as they were saying amen, they were getting up. They were all getting up. At that level, the man at the gate came back. He said, hey, how did you get here? Go out! (laughs) I said, thank you, sir. (laughs) I went out. The person I came to pray with, and those who were there, they were surprised. But what they did not know, was that I was more surprised. Because I was praying for only one person. The power of the awesome God now took that prayer and like insecticide began to flit it around the place. That is the power of the awesome God. I am praying for somebody here today. And the awesome God will fight for you. In the name of Jesus. Are you following me? I can go on for two years talking like this to you about what I have seen. Not they told me. <laughs> what I have seen. We had a pro- well, we normally have a program at Prayer City called Palm of Change Hands. A lady was at the Palm of Change Hands. She was 41, 42. Nobody has ever told her, I love you. Nobody has ever said, I want to even become your boyfriend. Even the useless, the useless boyfriend and girlfriend of primary school, secondary school, nobody told her. Most of you will have discovered now that the boyfriend of secondary school is useless boyfriend. Most of useless girlfriend <laughs> by now. <laughs> Most of them. <laughs> nobody told her. She was still a virgin. She was at Palm of Changers. We had closed the service. All of a sudden, there was a word from the Lord that there is a lady here. The powers that do not want you to marry, if they don't leave you alone, all of them shall die. Yeah. So the powers that do not want your wedding bells to ring, they don't leave you alone. All of them shall die. So the lady just said a dry amen. She lived in Via. She had a house, three cars, everything, but no marriage. When she got home from the program, it was a fasting program. She prepared tea to drink. As she prepared that, she wanted to put the tea in the mouth. The phone rang. She picked the phone. Hey, is that you? Say yes. Say, sorry, we just want to tell you that your uncle just died. Oh, she was so sad. Because she lived with that uncle when she was young. She was so depressed and sad. She started crying. Why she was still crying, the phone rang again. Say yes, say that you say yes, say your auntie just died. Uh-uh. So at that level, she now drank her tea properly. 
and stop crying. The phone rang again. A third person was dead. Do you know that within a month she was married? Listen. By the time you remove the problem of household wickedness from the affairs of the black man, 90% of his problems are over. Our greatest enemies are members of our own household. That's the truth. That's why I'm praying for somebody today. Every stubborn domestic enemy assigned against you, they shall be disgraced. In the name of Jesus. Let your amen be loud and clear. We're talking about the awesome God. If you are following me, say yes. The life of a minister can sometimes be very tough, especially if you don't have liver, if you are not strong. <laughs> One day, a man and a woman came to me. The woman was heavily pregnant. Um, the woman was a medical doctor. The husband too, a medical doctor. Both of them came for me for prayers. I was some years ago. And when they came, they said, a man of God, pray for my wife. This woman has been to the hospital 14 times and she never came back with a baby. They all died at the hospital. Ah. I said, this is the 15th pregnancy. I said, man of God, all we want, just pray that she delivers this one safely. Okay, I said, let us pray. I will close our eyes. And the Lord said, son, don't pray. Tell this woman, she has to do 21 days fasting. I said, that's all right. I said, no, it's not all right. I said, dry fast. And I said, sorry, we can't pray now. The Lord said, she has to do 21 days dry fast. The husband said, what? Are you crazy? You are, you are, you are a doctor yourself, aren't you? How can you ask a pregnant woman to fast for 21 days and be drinking just water? What will the baby be feeding on? There will be no glucose. There will be no this. There will be no that. There will be no... I said, but I was not the one that spoke. You said I should pray. The person you said I should pray to, that's what he said. He said, well, uh, sorry, sorry. Dear, 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 let us go. This one is a madman. This man is a madman. Let's go. Let's go away from here. This one is mad. See, I mean, it's crazy. This is what we're saying about this Pentecostal pastor. They are all madmen. <laughs> but the woman said, darling, I'm going to do what you said. He said, because I followed you to the hospital 14 times, I didn't come back with the baby. Let me try what he has said and see what happens. The man said, you want to try what? Try what? He said, well, he said, you have won. She has said she will listen to you, but let me tell you something. If anything happens to my wife, your face will be all over all Nigerian newspapers. Say, you are the one that killed her. <laughs> now, if a pastor is not bold, you will buckle. I said, okay. I said, that's a deal. Deal. Do you know the woman did it? And that's the only child she has now. When that baby was one month old, the husband came back to apologize. That he was sorry. That is the power of the awesome God. I'm praying for somebody yet again. That the awesome God shall visit you. In the name of Jesus. The implication of what I've told you so far is this. Why not meaning to be insulted or rude? The implication is that our problems are not our problems. Our problems is just ignorance about how to connect to the limitless, boundless power of the awesome God. That's all. So our problems is not really our problems. Our problem is how to connect to that limitless, boundless power of the awesome God. And I think that's why we're in this seminar. To know how to connect to it. Our problem is not our problem. 
Our problem is ignorance about the secrets of God. Ignorance about the mysteries of God. Ignorance about the limitless possibilities of the power of God. So most of the hopelessness and wretchedness and the trouble we face is because we do not know how to connect to the power of the awesome God whom we serve. Remember this, that, the words of Moses. The song in that Exodus that says, Who is like unto thee? Oh, oh Lord, who is like unto thee? Oh, Lord, I'm on the God who is like thee, you are glorious in holiness and fearful. Always do he wonders. Those powerful words from Moses. It's, ex- it's still the same. The Bible says, Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. This happened in Kenya. A girl from a Christian home was trying to help her parents to subsidize her school fees. So she goes out when she closes from school to pluck mangoes, oranges, and sell just to help her parents. She gathered oranges, pineapples by that park. I say park in Nairobi. At that park. And was selling it. All of a sudden, three men who were looking for people to use for rituals came to kidnap her. So they kidnapped the girl and put band upon her mouth with some cloth so that she could not talk. And they left her, they tied the leg to, they left her with one of the men the other two ran to go and bring the car to take the girl away. The girl was trying to cry, but because they've covered her mouth, she could only make some <laughs> try to cry. Only God knows the kind of prayers our parents prayed. All of a sudden, from inside the forest came a lion. The lion thought a baby lion was in trouble. When the man saw the lion coming, <laughs> nobody taught him what to do. <laughs> he ran and left the girl at the mercy of a lion. Oh, so he thought. He ran away. Then the lion came, sat by the side of the girl, and just laid there. Didn't touch the girl. Just stood there. Later, the two men who went to bring the car, who didn't know that their colleague had ran away. When they came, they saw this with their friend again. They saw the girl and the lion. They too, they fled. Later, the park police, they came with guns. As they were approaching, the lion saw them and just stood up and just walked into the forest. That could only be the power of the awesome God. I'm praying for somebody today. You will connect the awesome God. When you understand the mystery of his awesome power, when you understand the awesomeness of his power, that understanding gives you a master key 
to obtain victory in every battle you fight. When you understand the mysteries of his awesome power, and when you understand the awesomeness of the power of God, that understanding gives you the master key for obtaining victory in every battle you fight. It is a tragedy that these days believers are being rubbished. They just sack believers anyhow from the place of work. They, they just mess Christians up because they fail to connect to the awesomeness of the power of God. There is nobody that God has created that he can open a bit or respray or turn upside down if need be. After all, when the Nebuchadnezzar misbehaved, God converted him to an animal and sent him into the bush. A whole president became an animal. There is a strong prison house. That strong prison house is known as the prison house of ignorance. And ignorance is a disaster. When people are ignorant, they make mistakes. They do all kinds of things. When you are with the awesome God, you do not measure your enemy by their numbers. You measure them by the awesomeness of the power of your God. It is not, ah, Goliath is coming. He's too, he's too big. He's too big. I cannot handle him. No, Goliath is coming. He's so big that any stone you throw at him will catch him. By the awesomeness of the power of God. But ignorance has pushed us to a terrible level. And I want you to understand this. That God is greater than any problem that anybody has. Any problem at all. But this ignorance of connecting to that God is a problem. I was, uh, <laughs> I was in the aircraft and the plane ran into serious turbulence. Serious turbulence. So much turbulence that our drinks poured down. The food fell down. The plane was vibrating and shaking. was almost turning upside down. It's not a good experience. All those young ladies, we used to say, in case of any turbulence, oxygen mass like this will fall from this, that, that, that. This, you put it in your nose. Be, all those ones. Those, <laughs> <laughs> those, yeah, those things. They were already urinating their skirt. So when the person is saying, oh, so you might shall fall, is urinating in a sketch. Where are you yourself? Was, was, was an uproar. There was one man sitting at my front. Anytime the plane ran into turbulence, he would say, pilot, you are a bastard. So as far as he was concerned, was the pilot causing the problem? Anytime the plane shook again, say, bastard. Pilot, you are a bastard. But there was another man by the window. When the turbulence became very serious, the man said, yeah, hostess, give me beer. The hostess said, beer? In this situation, I said, no, everybody is, uh, everybody doesn't have to fasten their seat bed. I can't stand up to give you beer. I said, if you don't give me the beer, I will go and take it. So when there was a small respite, the elders ran to the, their cupboard or something, removed a can of beer and threw it at him. <laughs> the man caught it, opened it, and in the turbulence was drinking it. After some time, the turbulence ceased. When the turbulence now ceased, the air hostess stood up, went to the man and said, you're a wicked man. 
There was turbulence in this place. And you are drinking beer. He said, <laughs> say you don't know anything. Say, look at that window. Say, the person sitting on that window, you don't know him. That's Dr. Lukoya. Yeah. Amen. Say, that, that man is the general overseer of the mountain of fire and miracle. So, if he's in this plane, he can't crash. Say, say that's, that's why I was just drinking my beer. That was an unbeliever. An unbeliever had that kind of faith. Whereas the man at the front was still saying, Bastard! <laughs> so ignorance is a very serious problem indeed. When you want to connect God, <laughs> are you following me? There are different ways of Connecting God, though. You can say, hey, Father, don't forget me, oh. Remember me, oh Lord. Remember me, oh Lord. Remember me, oh Lord. Today. If blind Bartimaeus, on the way of Jericho to Jerusalem, Sat in that blind position and they say, Who is passing by? Say, It's Jesus. They say, Remember me, O Lord. Remember me, O Lord. <laughs> no. He became mad immediately. When you are in a crazy world, a little bit of insanity is necessary to survive. If you are living in a strange world, you need to be strange a little bit. There are plenty of things that that normal prayers cannot handle again. The enemies have mastered all those prayers. Can't handle it again. So, but for the next few minutes, blind Bartimaeus ran mad. Started shouting. And his shouting, his screams put a break on Jesus. And Jesus could not go forward. There, is, there are prayers you can pray. And heaven will stand at attention. Heaven will stop all activities until they have attended to your case. That's what happened. Jesus stopped all activities until they had attended to blind Bartimaeus. The Bible says, in the day that I cry, then shall my enemies turn back. This I know, for God is with me. He didn't say, it is the day that I talk. Anybody can talk. He didn't say, it is the day that I read. Anybody can read. We say, in the day that I cry, then shall my enemies turn back. This I know, for God is with me. If you take patients to the hospital, and the patient is, and the doctor says, how are you? Say, doctor, hey, not too bad, do hey, not too bad, but uh, not too bad, not too bad. It's not paining me too much. Not too bad. If that is what he's saying. But there's another patient in that hospital. Say, doctor, hey, will you be looking like this? Doctor, where are you? Come, 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 come. You'll find that that person will get the first attention. Because there is an aggression and urgency attached to what he's saying. Why the other one is taking things cool easy. All men in scripture who approached the awesome God and got uncommon testimonies. All men and women in scripture who approached the awesome God and got uncommon testimonies were very, very aggressive. Anna prayed in such a way that the lips were moving, but nothing was coming out again. She was, she had, she had, she had lost her voice. Nothing was coming out again. I want you to understand. There is a call. There is a call. There are prayers. There are prayers. I'm praying for somebody here today. You shall connect the awesome God. In the name of Jesus. When you cry unto the awesome God. 
you are crying unto him whose power has no measure. You are crying unto him whose power has no comparison. You are crying unto him whose power is uncontestable. You are crying unto him whose power is unchallengeable. All who ever challenge God or his children in the Bible or in church history were ruined by that God. God ruined them. You see the same thing today. Anybody is troubling the child of God, your God will ruin them. When you call upon that awesome God, you are calling on him whose power rules from continent to continent. You are calling on him whose power rules from nation to nation. From city to city. From village to village. From family to family. You say, they are very wicked in my village. Yes, the angels of God who can be more wicked than your village. Our family, they are very stubborn. Oh, the angels can be more stubborn. Than that. There are violent angels in heaven. Read your Bible well. Violent angels in heaven. And these violent angels from heaven, they, they, they don't care. Once you break the law, they deal with you. They don't care. They don't care at all. That's why God warned the Israelites when they were going to the promise and say, Behold, I have set my angel before you to guide you in all your ways. Say, but do not provoke him. Say, if you provoke him, he will not pardon. <laughs> God warned them. This angel will not pardon you if you provoke him. That was what happened to Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist. The angel got to him happily. The angel was very happy. Say, Zechariah, thy, thy prayer is hard. <laughs> thy wife Elizabeth shall have a son. And you shall call his name John. Many shall rejoice at his birth. He shall be great before the Lord. He shall go before him with the spirit and power of Elijah. The angel gave that wonderful news. He expected Ezekiel to jump up and say, Praise God. And the man said, uh-uh. How can these things be? When I am old and my wife is advanced in years. Oh. At that level, the angel said, Ah. Uh-uh. He said, I am Gabriel. He reintroduced himself. <laughs> Say, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of the Lord. And I was sent to bring this message to you, which should be fulfilled at their time. Say, but because you did not listen, I will make you dumb and unable to speak until the miracle happens. Nobody asks the angel to make Zechariah dumb. Just dealt with him straight away. I think one angel was, one angel was carrying the message one day as he was passing by. He heard the voice of Herod say, and somebody said, the voice of God and not of man. He said, ah, who, is, who is that again? He said, ah, in this place, voice of God and not of man in this place, let me see the person. He just gave Herod a small slap. Bam, and worms hit him up on the spot. Those are the angels. So if you say something is violent, uh, <laughs> let the violent angels be released. Was one angel that went throughout the land of Egypt and just killed all the firstborn. Was one angel that destroyed all the soldiers of Sennacherib. So, the awesome power of God goes from village to village, city to city, nation to nation, family to family. You can pray here. The result will be had in America. That's the truth. I was at a meeting in the UK. Was it four, three, four weeks ago? And I told the congregation, I said, focus your attention on one problem. And pray this prayer. There was a lady there. Her brother was about to be operated in Germany because his heart was seizing. Was about to operate. So he foc- she focused on the heart of his brother. That was around 12 midday. We prayed that prayer. After the service closed, the first call she got was from the brother. 
The brother said, at exactly 12 o'clock, I felt some fire burning in my chest. And by the time the doctors checked me, they said my heart is now normal. She was praying in London. The answer came in Germany. So the awesome power of God has no geographical limitation. I know there will be somebody here today who will pray and your prayer will disgrace your enemies. Let your amen be loud and clear. Let your amen be louder than that. When you call upon the power of the awesome God, you are talking about the power that is beyond the count of arithmetic. You can say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I begin to count. It's uncountable. It's beyond the count of arithmetic. You are talking about the power which is beyond description. Can't describe it. You are talking about the power which is beyond analysis. You can't sit down and begin to analyze it. You can't take the power of God to your laboratory, put it in a test tube, bring microscope, bring chemical, and begin to analyze. It's not possible. It's beyond analysis. Completely beyond analysis. It's a young lady at the headquarters, our headquarters, many years back. She came from a poor home. But for some reason, she said, I want to go and study in America. I want to go and study in America. You want to go and study in America. You have come from a poor home. You don't have money. You don't have anything. You can't even buy a ticket. Say, you want to go and study in America. And she went and applied for American visa. The day before going to that embassy, she stopped eating. She went on two days dry fast. She approached the embassy without food. And got there. And the man said, you want to go to the United States of America? Say, yeah. <laughs> to do what? Say, to study. As a student? Say, yes, okay. Where is your admission letter? Say, I don't have. <laughs> Where is evidence that you have money? God shall provide. The man said, you cannot be serious. So you, can, you, do, you think that's how you, you can't get the visa. So I, I, I refuse the visa. You can't get it. Say no, sir. You can't refuse. Uh-uh. Say why? Say because our father in the Lord gave a word of knowledge that I will get it. Your father in the Lord gave a word of knowledge that you will get it. Uh-uh. What is a word of knowledge? She confused the man for that. Said a word of knowledge is a prophetic utterance. I said prophetic. <laughs> said, what is prophetic utterance? <laughs> Say it's a word from God. Say your your father. In the, who is your father in the Lord? She mentioned the name. I said. Say 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 you, say, you, see, you know what? Say you're not till you to get aren't you? You're very naughty girl, aren't you? It's okay. You know what? I give you the visa. She has gotten a degree now. She's gotten the first degree. When she brought the passport with the visa, I opened my mouth. I could not close it. <laughs> because there are people who will pack documents, paper, admission letter, vidance, this house, that house, everything. They take it down and the people will say no. The person, this person went with his passport. No document. The power of God is beyond analysis. When you call upon the awesome God, you are calling upon him whose power is beyond the boundaries of human language. That's why they say his greatness is unsearchable. There is no language to be describing it. When you call upon the awesome God, you are calling upon him who has imperial power. He rules over kings. When you call upon the awesome God, you are calling upon him whose power can cancel every other power. When other powers have gathered themselves together and they claim to be great, he comes in and cancels them. 
when you call upon the awesome God, you are calling upon the absolute power. The absolute power. You are calling upon the swallowing power. The power that swallows other powers. Just like the serpents of Moses swallowed the serpent of the magicians. When you call upon the awesome God, you are calling upon him whose power has no respect for geographical distance, geographical location. When you call upon the awesome God, you are calling upon him whose power has no respect for the speed or progress of the enemy. No matter how far the enemy has gone, no matter what progress they've made, his power has no respect for it. When you call upon the awesome God, you are calling upon him whose power has no respect for anything any doctor has said. You are calling upon the creative power. The power that creates from nothing. The power that creates from nothing. A lady was a prostitute. During the prostitution, she developed the cancer of the womb. And the doctor removed her womb. It's after they removed her womb, she got born again. And started coming to church. She had made up her mind that no marriage anymore. Because there is no womb. But as she kept coming to church, one day one brother went to her and said, Excuse me, God said you are my wife. <laughs> she refused to answer the brother. And that one kept pestering her. So when the, when the pestering became too much for her, she called the brother and said, excuse me. The reason I'm saying no is because there is no womb. And the brother said, well, God did not tell me whether there is a womb or not. God just said, this is your wife. So they went to the pastor and they got married. The pregnancy of this woman and the safe delivery of a child was what converted the surgeon to Christianity. Because he kept saying, but I removed it. But I removed it. But I removed it. But I removed it. He did not put the awesome God in his calculation. Who went behind and overruled whatever they did and got things to start working. When you call upon the power of the awesome God, you are calling upon the power that can render diviners mad. They are consulting native doctors against you. They are cons- consulting witch doctors against you. Your God can make the native doctor mad. That's what the Bible says. It renders diviners mad. Renders diviners mad. When you call upon the awesome God. We're talking about the power that can uphold and dismantle anything. Said so He has given you the name which is above all names. Far above every principality and power. And far above every name that is to be named. Whether in heaven, on earth, whether they be principalities, whether they be powers, whether the dominion, say, in him all things consist. When you call upon the power of the awesome God, you are calling upon the power that cannot be resisted. Power that cannot be resisted. Power that has no respect for impossibility. That is the power of God. You are calling upon the unquenchable power unsearchable power. When the awesome God opens a door, no man can shut it. When the awesome God shuts a door, no man can open that door. And there is no problem that is too hard for the awesome God to solve. There is no enemy that is too hard 
for the awesome God to dismantle. There is no reproach that is too hard for the awesome God to remove. There is no enemy that is too stubborn for the awesome God to deal with. You must have heard me sharing this before. One day, the husband of a woman came home and said, My dear, beginning from today, I shall be bringing in my friends to the house. And these friends are women. And you must respect them. And you must not fight with them. They are my friends. The woman said, How can you be bringing women home when I'm here? So, well, it's a question of style. I have just changed my style. <laughs> so the first night he brought one woman home. And when they got there, they say, My dear, prepare food for my visitor. Say, Your visitor? Say, Yes. Okay. She gave food, believing that she, the woman would just eat and go away. The woman at 11 p.m. She was sitting in the house. 12 minutes she was sitting there. At 1 o'clock, they entered the bedroom together and left Madame in the sitting room. A visitor. She said, in that sitting room, she felt like going to the kitchen, taking a bottle and breaking the head of the two of them. So, but she remembered the message we preach at church that you have to be broken. You have to be broken. You have to be broken. That if I smash somebody's eyes with a bottle, my church will blame me for not being broken. She so said she was struggling there. She couldn't sleep all night. Why those ones were making their uh, unholy noise in the other room. Mm. A few days later, he brought in another person again. Say, so, Madam, come and cook food for your visitor. And the man went on like that. Then we had the anointing service. After the anointing service, she now went home and anointed the bed. That night, the husband made a holy mistake. Brought another woman in again. Before this time, all the women brought in were short, thin, skinny, and his height. But the person he brought that night was a giant. Big, huge woman. Muscular woman. They went into the bedroom and made another holy mistake. They slept on the anointed bed. Then only God knows what happened. They started fighting. Fight started. Bah, 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 bah. This huge woman took the man, who is a bit smallish, folded him up like paper. Put him on the floor, sat on him, and was pounding his head. The man was enduring the blows because he, he, well, the only person at home is madam. The blow, but when he saw that, hey, the way these blows were going, he may die. He screamed, Mama Sunday, come on. <laughs> so that one ran there to find this huge woman on top of her husband, pounding his head with heavy blows. His face was swollen. So, so the woman began to beg, say, please, don't kill my husband, please, leave him alone. The man I said, the woman now stood up and said, foolish man. Foolish man. You have such a beautiful wife at home. I don't know what you are doing on the streets. Foolish man. So, okay, where is my money? The man was not in a position to even answer. So she just went to his briefcase, opened it, took all the money there, and walked out into the night. Beginning from that day, he never brought any woman home again. He thought he was stubborn, but he missed the awesome God out of his calculation. The awesome God can create something from nothing. 
when his power is at work. When do you need the awesome God? You need the awesome God when mockers are gathered against you. You need the awesome God when unbelievers are asking you, where is your God? You need the awesome God when evil powers are challenging God in your life. You need the awesome God when there is a satanic audience waiting for you to fall. You need the awesome God when you have married into a demonic family. You need the awesome God when debts are mounting and income is very low. You need the awesome God. You need the awesome God when, when shedding of tears have become a regular affair. We need, you need the awesome God when you try to smile but it's crying that comes. You need the awesome God. You need the awesome God when you desperately need divine intervention or you lose everything. You need the awesome God when the enemies are gathered against you waiting for your downfall. You need the awesome God when you desperately need a miracle. You desperately need help. You desperately need divine intervention. You need that awesome God. I'm praying for somebody here. That awesome God will arise for your sake. In a way that will shock your friends and surprise your enemies. I was sharing something last week. <laughs> we are going to connect in now. I've just spent the first few minutes telling you about the awesomeness of the power of our God. We are going to go into the connection. How do I now connect? I was sharing this last week. It was an Igbo woman. The Igbo woman has had six girls. No boy. So the family of the husband gathered against her. And said, well, thank you so much for all these girls that you have put here. <laughs> but we need a boy. So they went to the village. Took a new wife for the man. And brought the woman to Lagos. And said, well, you have to live together with this new wife. Because we want a boy. The woman was so troubled. Troubled. And it was difficult to convince the man. That it is his fault that they are all girls. Because as far as genetics is concerned, it is what the man do needs that decides whether somebody is boy or girl. If the man do needs X, it will be a girl. Do need Y to be a man. It's what the man do needs. So the woman now came crying that I don't want to lose my home. This, that, 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 that. Okay. We prayed. Call on the awesome God. And I said, Go back. Tell your husband that give me one year and I will have a male child. Tell your husband to send the strange woman away. So she went home. This man is not born again. He's not a Christian. It's only the woman who comes to church. So she went home and said, um, uh, uh, Darling, uh, I have a message to you from our pastor. <laughs> And say, what is the message? Say, the pastor said, I should tell you to send the new wife away. That I will have a baby boy within a year. Uh, the, man, the man said, your pastor. Who is your pastor? So she mentioned my name. Oh, the man said, oh, is it that one? 
Is it that one? It's me that is calling that one. Is it that one? See, see. If it's, if it's that one, I will listen. I will listen. If it's that one. So, he sent the new wife away. Then this woman got pregnant. When she got pregnant, by the time they will look at the first scan, they were triplets. By the time the babies will be born, they were all boys. This miracle converted the man, all their family abroad, to becoming to man of. <laughs> that is the power of the awesome God. He over answers prayer. He will over answer your prayer. Let your amen be loud and clear. You say, how do I connect the awesome God? I will now give you the keys one by one. This is the slow part of this lecture. So that you can understand how to connect to the awesome God. One. You need to become a friend of God. Meaning that you must surrender your life to Jesus. You must be born again. The Bible says, whosoever is in Christ has become a new creature. All things are passed away. So behold, all things have become new. It is sad that many people who call themselves Christians are not born again. Many pastors are not born again. Many general overseers are not born again. Many choir members are not born again. Many deacons and deaconesses are not born again. Many superintendents are not born again. Many bishops are so, so far from being born again. That you sometimes call them born against. Not born again. You need to become a friend of God. That's, that is not negotiable. Because God is under no obligation to bless a rebellious person. You need to surrender your life to Jesus. You need to be able to say that all things have passed away in my life. All things have now become new. It's important. The next step to connecting the awesome God is to ask. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given unto you. What did I say? Ask. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. You need for the first, the first subject in the school of prayer is for you to ask. But asking has different categories. May I have a pencil? Please, can I have a pencil? May I have this? May I have that? That is asking. Sometimes a person is praying about certain things and uh, you have consigned the prayers to footnote. You are not really seriously addressing it. So every night when you want to say, oh, Father, thank you. I just don't forget to, I need to get married. So, <laughs> so you, that prayer is footnote prayer. You are not really, you are not serious yet about that. But you are, at least you are asking, which is good. But you could ask. And then nothing is happening. Then you need to now move to the next level. Seek. The Bible says, ask. And it shall be given unto you. Say, seek. 
and ye shall find. Are you following what I'm saying? Or I'm too, have I complicated anything yet? Okay. So, one level of prayer is to ask. If that level did not give you what you want, that is the normal prayer, then you go to the next level, which is what? Seek. That next level, seek, is a higher intensity of prayer. Because right now, you want to find out why the answer has not come. That's the prayer. We call it inquiry prayers or explorative prayers. Say, I want to know why. Why? Why? That's the why, 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 why prayer. Why prayer? And that why prayer can be aggressive. You need to find out why is this not happening? Why? Why? And if you ask, if you seek, the Bible says, you will find. I need a breakthrough for my business. You've prayed, but the money is not coming. Then you go to the next level. Why is this money not coming? Why, why, why prayer? It is because of why, why, why prayer that people go to prophets. It's because of why, why, why prayer. Sometimes some people go to consult those they should not even consult. And you must not get yourself to a level where God abandons you and is talking to you, talking to another person about you. Why is he not talking to you yourself? Why? Why prayers? There's a story in the Bible. (laughs) Jeroboam was an evil king. Jeroboam had a baby. And the baby was dying. Jeroboam didn't want the baby to die. So he sent his wife to the prophet. And asked the wife to disguise. And go to the prophet. Jeroboam had been so far from God. That he did not even know that the prophet. That he sent his wife was already blind. So there was no need to disguise. Because the man was blind. (laughs) Anyway the wife disguised. And went to look for prophet Ahijah. Immediately she got to the door. As she was at the door, the prophet said, Come thou in, thou wife of Jeroboam. <laughs> Why finish thyself to be another? Say, so Why are you these guys? Say, so Come down him. Say, so I know why you have come. You have come because you, are, you want to find out whether the baby that your baby that is sick will live or die. Say, so Hear the word of the Lord. The baby shall die. And shall not live because it is in, only in that baby we find something good in your family and the problem that is coming against you so that the baby will not suffer. That's why God is removing the baby. So go away. So that was, he went to find a why prayer. Why? A couple got married on a Wednesday. Yes, Wednesday. When they were at the reception, the man's male organ was still there. When they got home at night, the male organ had disappeared. This is not a story. Because I said remove your trouser. There was nothing there, just one hole. If you are in the kind of ministry where deliverance and all, you will see strange things. Plenty of strange things. Just hole. The woman was crying bitterly. Hey, what kind of bad luck is this? I can cope with anything, but I cannot cope with this one. <laughs> what kind of bad luck is this? <laughs> so, 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 please, please, please. I know we did not get married in this church. How do you, how do they cancel marriages? It must be cancelled. <laughs> I said, let us pray. We prayed and the Lord said, son, don't bother to pray for this man. Just ask him to go to his mother in Abel Kuta and find out what happened. And he rushed to Abel Kuta and said, mommy, this is what I'm experiencing. The mother was not surprised. She knew what was going on. Anyway, the bottom line is that uh, he got it back. <laughs> but the why happened in Abel Kuta happen. You see? So, seek. You begin to search. Why? 
Why? Why? Why? Why? During that why, you may now receive information. That information, you now act on it. Sometimes it's useless to continue praying when you don't even know why certain things are happening. Are you following what I'm saying? If you understand me, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We're talking about connecting the awesome God. Everything has level. Prayer has level. The Bible has everything. The preaching has level. Everything has level. So when you try one level and it's not working for you, you go to the next level. That's what we're saying now. They brought a man to the press city. The wife dragged the man to the press city. Why did the wife drag her husband to the press city at Express Road? Uh, in the family of the man. Whenever they move close to 39, stroke 40, they die. So it was easy in the family to know the next person to die by looking at their age. They were just dying, dying, dying like that. This woman, the husband was 39 years and 6 months. The man was already writing his will and writing everything. The woman dragged the man to the press. He said, no, no, no. You cannot die like that. Blah, blah, blah. Come to the press city. That's why they brought the man there. Prayer started. Why? Why are they dying like that in that place? Then the Lord gave a revelation. There was a strong king in that family many years back who died. And when that strong king died, all the seven slaves that were serving him were buried alive with him. So it's those seven slaves who caused that as they were killing them like this at the prime of their age may their children never attain the age of 40. So atonement has to be made and that cause has to be cancelled before anything can happen. Are you following what I'm saying? So that's, so seeking is a more intense form of prayer which is above just normal asking. If you try that level and you don't get an answer yet, you go to the next level which is knocking. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. This is a pulpit here now. Right. I want to knock this place. I have to fold this hand. Abi, maybe so. I'm beginning to do like this. I'm hot. I'm hurting my knuckles. But I'm knocking. Knocking is painful to the knocker. It's also disturbing. So he's, he's paining him, but it's disturbing. If somebody comes to your door at night, back, 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 and just keeps knocking, 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 he's not sleeping because he's knocking. You too, you have been disturbed. <laughs> so the knocking level of prayer is a higher intensity of prayer which has to do with violence. Persistent, violent prayers. It has to do with the prayers that the Bible calls holy disturbance. That is, you are disturbing heaven. The Bible says, Ye who remember the name of Jehovah, you Jehovah remembrances, give him no rest until he has established Jerusalem and makes it a peace in the earth. That is, knocking prayer is prayer that gives heaven no peace, no rest. If you are following me, shout hallelujah. Remember the story of that widow. 
the widow was coming to the judge every day. Avenge me of my adversaries. Avenge me of my adversaries. Whenever the judge was driving to the office, the widow would be at the door. Okay, judge. <laughs> Avenge me of my adversaries. When the man closes from work and is going home, the widow is already at the door again. Avenge me of my adversaries. The widow will come into the courtroom while the court case is going on. When the court is quiet, say, Oh God, Josh, before you close today, avenge me of my adversaries. Avenge me of my adversaries. Avenge me of my adversaries. He made, he, he became, she became a pest. So, prayer of knocking is when you become a pest to heaven. So that when you disturb them so much in heaven, they say, excuse me, excuse me, let us, <laughs> please sir, let's do what this person wants. Because if I increase us here with all these requests, let's do it. So, that's what the prayer of knocking means. A lot of people can't do the prayer of knocking because of laziness. If, for example, you get fed up with a situation and you wake up 6 a.m. in the morning, you pray about that situation for one hour. Nine o'clock, you are back there. Pray again for one hour. Twelve, you are back there. You pray again for one hour. Three o'clock, you are back there. You pray again for one hour. Six o'clock, you are back there. You pray again for one hour. Nine o'clock, you are back there. You pray again for one hour. Twelve midnight, you come back there. You pray for one hour. Then you are knocking. Because you, every hour of the day, all the angels that used to take prayer requests to heaven, they are carrying your prayer request. All of them. Nobody is going without your prayer request. Every three, three hours, you are bombarding the place. That's what we call watches prayer. People pray watches prayer when they are tired of being tired and sick of being sick. And then they are fed up with the situation the enemy is bringing before them. I know there will be somebody here <laughs> whose enemy will be in trouble after this meeting. Yeah. What kind of prayer do we call that one? Knocking. Knocking prayers. Bombarding heaven. Holy disturbance. Holy pestering of heaven. Just like the Syrophoenician woman who ran after Jesus, crying, crying. And they said, Lord, this woman is crying after us. Tell her to stop. Let Tell her to go away. Jesus is not quieting the woman. And the woman kept screaming until Jesus had to stop. The same with the blind Bartimaeus. Knocking. Knocking. Knocking prayers. If you try the three hour, three, three hour approach, and you're like, not getting what you want, and you want to knock even harder, one, one hour. 12 midnight, you start. You pray for 30 minutes. 1 o'clock again, 30 minutes. If you do that throughout the day, things, things will certainly happen. That's the knocking prayer. It's an intensity of connecting to the power of the awesome God. If you try the knocking prayer, <laughs> and you don't seem to be getting somewhere, there's another level again. It is called the liquid prayers. Liquid prayers is when you introduce tears into your prayer. The prayer of crying. Tears. Shedding tears. Crying in prayers. Which was what Anna did. Every tear that a child of God drops is kept in a bottle by the Almighty. And the Almighty records those tears. Not crying because you have a problem, but crying to the level where your prayer moves you to tears. When you begin to cry in tears like this, even have respect for those kind of prayers, and they are very, very super effective. Very, very super effective. Crying prayers is desperate prayers. Desperate prayers. And God respects and is looking for those who will pray desperate prayers. When a person is desperate and you are praying desperately, 
desperation does not care what anyone thinks. Just like blind Bartimaeus could not be bothered. Those who were saying, keep quiet. Stop shouting. Ah, you are disturbing us. He couldn't be bothered. When you are desperate, you don't bother about what anyone is thinking. Desperation has no respect for what anyone is saying. Hmm, no respect for what anyone is saying. That's those who are praying desperate prayers. Desperation does not allow anyone to stop it. I say, I stop this prayer. I stop it. It's enough. You, you just you refuse for any power or anyone to stop you from praying the kind of prayer you should pray. Brother Lucky. <laughs> Brother Lucky was going to work on Monday. Brother Lucky got to the door of his house and was praying the normal ice cream prayer. Most of us pray before we go out. Father, I thank you for today. I'm going out and I cover my journey with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And out you go. <laughs> He had prayed the ice cream prayer. was about to go out. But the sister of God said, Son, continue the prayer. Don't leave this door. So he continued praying again. After two minutes, he said, In Jesus' name I pray. He said, Son, continue the prayer. So he continued praying again. He wanted to say, In Jesus' name I pray. He said, No, Son, continue the prayer. And he was getting late. He said, ah, I want to go to work. Ah. He prayed again. He wanted to say, In Jesus' name I pray. The spirit said, Continue the prayer. He said, ah, okay. In Jesus' name I pray, John. Ah. And, <laughs> and he went out. The last thing Brother Lucky could remember was that he was inside a taxi cab at Oshoji. That was the last thing he remembered. He was inside a taxi car at Oshoji. That was the last thing he remembered. The next time he would gain consciousness, he was in the deep bush close to Ore in the camp of ritual killers. They had already slaughtered so many people, including pregnant women. And Brother Lucky was supposed to be the next. When he saw them preparing his knife and his concussion and incantation, he began to pray. (laughs) He began to pray. As he prayed, they were getting confused. They were missing the incantation. They were missing the concussion. So somebody said, this man we want to use is saying something. So they went to me and said, Mr. Man, you are saying something. Stop saying it. Do you understand? If we say it again, we shall kill you instantly. He said, yes, sir. He kept quiet. But he was praying in his mind. As he was praying in his mind, they were still getting confused. So they came back. I said, Mr. Man, that thing we say you should stop saying, you are saying it inside. <laughs> this is why only a fraudulent pastor will be telling you that the devil has no power. The enemy has power. If he doesn't have, Jesus will not say to trample upon every power of the enemy. They have. There is a power of the enemy. If they don't have power, the magicians of Pharaoh, with what did they produce as happens? Is their power. So when the now said, Stop, you are thinking something, stop thinking what you are thinking. The now said, Well, he remembered the story of Esther in the Bible. He said, Well, if I perish, I perish. With a loud voice, he blew out and started speaking in some blah 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 in the place. There was plenty of confusion. The place went into disarray. All of a sudden, somebody grabbed his hand and drew him out of the place and left him alone. When he will open his eyes, he found himself at the University of Lagos. So, desperation does not allow anything to stop it. Desperation introduces extra energy. Somebody is desperate. Extra energy. The beautiful thing about desperate prayers 
is that when we become desperate, our progress begins. What did I say just now? <laughs> Your progress begins. It was when Anna became desperate. Progress began. That's how somebody has said, you are entitled to what you tolerate. When you become desperate, your progress begins. So desperation, beloved, is not a bad thing. Many blessings from heaven will not manifest until we get desperate. So, so part of the prayers of, of liquid prayers is desperation. Somebody is praying desperately. It was a desperate prayer. Then that's how to connect to the Almighty God. And His awesomeness will now come into your situation. Now, there is a weapon that we really use. Simply because most people don't know how to use this weapon. It is called praises. The Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. The Bible says God is glorious in holiness and fearful in praises. That is, when you throw yourself into unhindered praise, God becomes very fearful to your enemies. These are strategies and systems to connect the awesome God. And I think that's why we're going to stop for, for now. God bless you. In Jesus name. Amen. We are going to pray now. Let's rise up on our feet. All eyes closed. After this prayer session, there will be a short break for you to write your prayer request. Short break to write your prayer request. Short break to write some questions. If you have questions to ask, then uh, we'll take it from there. Because some of you may want to ask some questions about what we've said here today. But right now, we need to go and call upon that awesome God to intervene in our situation. We need to also go home, study this message thoroughly, and begin to put it into practice. All eyes closed. But you see, if you're here this afternoon, and you are not born again, you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus, I'm here to help you, so that you too can be able to connect to the awesome God, and benefit from the prayers of this afternoon. Wherever you are, while all eyes are closed, if you say, Pastor, I want to surrender my life to Jesus, because I like to connect to the awesome God. Right there where you are, while all eyes are closed, just raise up your right hand, I want to pray for you from here. Just raise up your right hand. You have not done so. You want to do so today. And you want God to intervene in your situation. You don't want to continue the way you've been going. God bless you. I see those hands. God bless you. Don't be shy. That's why Jesus brought you here. Those of you raising up your right hand, take a bold step of faith. Just come quickly to me at the altar here. I want to pray for you. Just find a way to my altar here. Quickly. I want to pray for you. Don't be shy. That's why Jesus brought you here. Find a way to this altar. You want to, you have not done so before. You want to surrender your life to Jesus. Just find a way to this altar now. Find a way to the altar. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I have decided then to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning 
Papa No Tony I have decided Decided To follow Jesus I have decided To follow Jesus I have decided To follow No turning back No turning Those of you at the altar here, I congratulate you. You've taken the most important decision in life. Just close your eyes. Ask the Lord to forgive you your sins. Talk to him. Tell him to forgive. Lord, forgive me my sins. Come into my life. Talk to the Lord yourself. Amen. Say what I'm going to say for me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, Come into my life. Take control of my life. As from today, I say bye bye to the devil. I enter into the kingdom of light. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to pray with you now. Father, I thank you for your children here. I pray that you uphold them by your power. The decision they've taken today shall be permanent in their lives. It shall continue to be well with you. No weapon form against you shall prosper. Today that you have surrendered your life to Jesus, you shall connect the awesome God. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Look, just follow this, our sister. Look at this, sister. Just follow her. Just, there is a form they're giving to you. Just fill the form and give it to her. God bless you. Just follow her for one or two minutes. God bless you as you do so. God bless you as you do so. On the mountain. In the valley, on the land, and in the sea, on the mountain, in the valley, on the land, and in the sea, hallelujah. The Lord is my portion, man. The Lord. On the mountain, in the valley, on the land, and in the sea, on the mountain, in the valley, on the land, and in the sea. Hallelujah! The Lord is my portion in the land of the living. The Lord is good. The Lord is my portion in the land of the living. The Lord is good. Forever, oh my God, you are worthy of our praises today. You are worthy of our praises today. Alpha, 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 and Omega, you are worthy of our praises today. You are worthy of my praises today. Alpha, 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 and Omega. You are worthy of my praises today. You are worthy of my praises today. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised, O Lord. 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 I God of miracles. I know. Yes, I know. I'm serving the God of miracles. I know, yes, I Shout know. Shout it, Mama Clyde. I'm serving the God of miracles. I know, yes, I know. Hallelujah. I'm serving the God of miracles. I know, yes, I know. Are you serving it? I'm serving the God of miracles. I know, yes, I know. Hallelujah. I'm serving the God of miracles. 
I know, yes I know, the God that answered by fire. Be my God, God answered 